Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Peter Chats. So when I talk to my friends about personal finances, they often ask me to speak the truth, to give them some tough love. And at this point, they're usually in this transition stage in their life where they're no longer that young. The future is becoming more of a reality. I never thought they'd grow old, but here they are, slowly growing old together with me. And they realize that they gotta put their financial house in order. Ever since I started working, I've always had a financial independence mindset. I wanted to be financially independent as soon as possible. I grew up in poverty and I knew what it felt like to have to work, not because you chose to work. And I respect work. I think work is good for the human soul, but I don't want to be told what to do or how to do it. I want to choose the work that I want to do. Now, habits are an outflow of a mindset. If you don't have a change in mind, or if your mind isn't fixated on something, the habits are not gonna come along. You can't watch a video on you know, five habits to be better at blah, 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 and expect those habits to stick unless you're much convinced that this is what you want. And those habits will follow that change in mindset, or that change of heart that you have. Now, these are habits that eventually flowed out of my mindset. My mindset was to be financially independent, as soon as possible. If you have the same mindset as me, I hope this helps you. Maybe it helps you along your journey. It helps you get there faster. If you don't have this mindset, or you're sick and tired of your current financial situation, maybe these habits that I'm gonna talk about will help inspire you or help encourage you to slowly change and evolve your mindset. Now, these habits do sound strange. I'm gonna warn you up front. You know, some of them may be stuff you've heard. Some of them are kind of, kind of intense. But if you want extreme results, <laughs> you have to have extreme habits. So here we go. Avoid debt. I mean, avoid debt at any cost. Apart from a mortgage, which usually has a very low rate, especially today, and the fact that most people can't come up with the full price of a house up front, all of the debt tends to be a hindrance rather than, than an aid. Most debt, apart from your mortgage debt, tends to have a very high interest rate. And so it's just limiting your options for the future if you keep allowing that debt to roll forward and only pay down a little bit at a time. Pay that down aggressively. If you can pay down aggressively, it opens up your options for what you want to do in the future with your money. I paid off all of my student debt in my first year of work. Pay off your credit card balances. Don't let the balances roll over month to month because interest rates on credit card balances are notoriously high. This also means if you can, buy your car in full, pay in cash, and plan on driving it for a very long time. The average car on the road is almost 12, it's over 12 years old actually. So don't roll your car over and over again every five to six years taking out a loan on a new car each time. That's just dumb. It's seriously dumb. I know that in the beginning you may not have enough money to buy a car up front so maybe buy a modest car and if you maybe you need to take out a loan that is what it is but pay that down as fast as you can and a lot and over time as you accumulate savings buy your next car in cash you only need to get from point a to point b it doesn't really matter what you're driving and keep in mind that a car is not an asset it's a rapidly depreciating liability that you need to pay a tax to drive the tax is the car insurance and the nicer car you have the higher your tax, in effect. Now, after people have paid down all their debts, some people try to accelerate the pay down of their mortgage. And I think that's kind of up to you. For some people, they think any debt is bad, and they just don't like the risk of having, having any debt on their personal balance sheet. For other people, they think having a sub 3% fixed 30-year debt is actually very attractive. So they don't see a reason why they should pay it off quickly. They think they can better invest the money elsewhere and get a much higher than 3% interest rate, or 3% rate of return. Zero-based budgeting mentality. Now in the business world, zero-based budgeting is not commonly used. Um, the traditional budgeting approach is you take what you spent last year and you roll it forward to the current year up ahead and you either increase it a little bit or decrease it a little bit. But if you want extreme results, you can't just increase it a little bit or decrease it a little bit. Zero-based budgeting is an extreme form of budgeting in the business world. You start every year with zero expenses. And every expense that you add on to the budget has to be justified. Just because you spent money on something last year doesn't mean you have to spend it this year if it isn't justified. If you take it to the personal finance realm, zero-based budgeting is the same idea. Just because you spent something last year doesn't mean you have to spend something this year. You start from scratch every single year with what you actually need to spend, not what you think you ought to spend just because you spent the last year. A normal statement is, if you make X, you should live in a house this nice, drive a car this nice, spend a certain amount of money on clothing, or eating out. I heard it all the time. Peter, you can afford it. Why don't you buy this or do that? I think the statement, if you can afford it, is the most useless statement ever. It tells you nothing about how much you value something and whether or not this is going to get you to your long-term goals. Zero-based budgeting will challenge every expense you have. Is this expense getting you towards your long-term goals? Is it bringing you joy? Or is it a necessity of life? 
If it isn't any of those things, just cut it out. A standard budget gives you a false sense of accomplishment. Whatever results you had last year based on your last year's budget, those results aren't going to change on your new budget. So just because you stuck to the budget, it doesn't mean that you've accomplished anything if you didn't accomplish anything last year. The other issue with the standard budget is that it encourages lifestyle creep. If you got a raise or a promotion, then you increase your budget by a couple of percent or more to account for the raise or promotion. But then your lifestyle just keeps creeping up and up. And keep in mind that no job is 100% secure. Everyone is ultimately replaceable in the corporate world. It also gets much harder to take something away once you've gotten used to it. It's easier not to have it in the first place. So if you're used to driving a nice car, it's a lot more difficult to downgrade to a modest car. If you're used to living in a luxury apartment, it's a lot more difficult to downgrade from that. Live well below your means. I know you probably heard live below your means, but I mean live well below your means. If you're comfortable living at $50,000 a year, and then all of a sudden you start making seventy-five dollars or $100,000 a year, why would you increase your spending? Maybe you can treat yourself and live on $55,000 a year, but why do you need to live up to a seventy-five dollars or $100,000 a year income? And then after a few years, maybe your income has grown to two hundred grand a year. Why not live on sixty dollars to $75,000 a year? Why do you need to live all the way up to your new income now? So live well below your means. It's a good discipline because it makes you realize that just because you can afford something doesn't mean that you actually need it. You're perfectly happy with what you had when you're making 50 grand a year. So why do you all of a sudden need to quadruple what you have or how you spend just because now you're making four times more? If you want extreme results, you can't think like everyone else. Ignore the crowd. And this is the most difficult thing to do. This is the hardest thing to do because of peer pressure. It's just hard. People will think you're weird or strange. There's a lot of broke people driving around in nice cars, living in nice houses, and taking nice vacations. They'll take pictures of it, and they'll put it up on social media, and it may make you feel a little bit bad inside, but you have to realize that these are just temporary, superficial images of momentary happiness. You don't know what their long-term goals are. You don't know what their financial health is. Social media makes you think that you should be normal like everyone else, but normal is broke. Catch the small foxes. So think about this. If you spend $5 on coffee every single work day for a whole year, that adds up to $1,250. Now, if you go out for brunch once a week for $25 each, that adds up to $1,300 a year. Now, if you eat out once for dinner at $30 a piece, that adds up to $1,560 a year. If you just add those three things up, that's already over $4,000 a year that you would save if you cut those out of your lifestyle. And you need fewer clothes than you think. If you wonder where your savings is going, you're eating it up or you're wearing it. One specific habit I had was I would never buy drinks when I was outside. I knew that the margins were really high at a club, at a restaurant, at a convenience store. I didn't want to spend two, three dollars on a container of sugar water. It just didn't make sense to me. Another habit I had was whenever I would buy clothing, I would think about how long I would wear that article of clothing. I wanted to justify that purchase. Using this logic, sometimes I actually realized that it made sense to buy cheap shoes, especially if I wore out expensive shoes really quickly. A good jacket can last over 10 years, so there's no need to buy a new jacket just because there's a sale going on. Invest early and save. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world, and time is your best friend if you treat him right. If you save $10,000 a year every year until you're 65 years old and it compounds at 7% per year, the end result will be very different depending on when you started to save. If you started to save at age 25, your end balance at the age 65 will be over $2 million. If you start saving at age 35, the end balance will be about a million dollars. If you start saving at 45, your end balance will be just under under $500,000. So what a big difference time can make. So save early and invest early. It makes a world of difference. Think long term. Live in the present but think long term. It's one of the harder things to do because basically we're talking about delayed gratification. If you want something badly enough in the future you make sacrifices today. It just depends on how badly you want it. Lastly, give to charity. Make it about others. Give of your time and money. If your goal is financial independence just for the sake of financial independence, that's going to be meaningless. Over time, I realized that I wanted to be financially independent because I wanted the options to be creative and I wanted to help people and I wanted to be available to help people. People may call you cheap or weird if you have these extreme habits, but you're probably giving far more to charity than they are, so let them call you weird. You know what you're about, you know what your long-term goals are, you know what you're trying to achieve. Thank you guys for watching, take care. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a comment. Um, I'll do my best to answer any of your questions, and if you have any other ideas for videos that you'd like me to do, please let me know. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.